Okay, for the next example I would like to show you, uh, I would like to use a different strategy. Uh, let's get rid of the stock and uh, bring up the part we would like to machine. So this is the part we are going to machine. You see now the difference between, uh, let's say, part number two and this part is the following. In this case, um, the the stock model, if I show the stock model here, um, was the same shape like the floor surface. So all the cuts, they had the same step, um, depth step, distance, and um, according to this, we could machine all the area. Now for the new part, or for this part number three, it is different. You can see here that the um, floor surface is this um, slightly curved surface. However, we would like to machine um, the, all the area between the, uh, between the walls here. So um, let's see what the system does. If um, the cuts are not always going um, parallel to the floor and stopping at the same height here. Um, so I take the, let's say, part number four and I copy the operation once again. Let's rename it part number three and reselect the surfaces. We have done that before. Okay, select this surface, which is a floor surface, and then we select the wall surface. We select the whole part. Okay, good. Confirm. And then we go to the stock definition. We gotta reselect our stock, still keeping the, the stock from the last operation. As usual, um, I have prepared a stock, which is this one here. Okay. Okay, uh, that's it. That's the part uh, selection. If we look at the part number three, you can see that it is basically just inside the box I have created here. So what we expect to see is the two parts being right here in this area, removing the full area uh, between the walls. Um, yeah. So let's hide this and kick off the calculation. And let's wait for the result. Okay, here's the result. Looks pretty good. Let's make a cutting simulation. I will have to reselect the, the stock for the cutting simulation. Okay, bring the simulation on the screen and let's simulate. And then we see that we uh, machining the whole area between the two walls. The upper cuts here are not full cuts, they are not um, following the floor surface completely. The cuts get trimmed according to the stock definition. So we get shorter cuts here at the top and the cuts get longer at the bottom. Okay, very nice. Now I would like to um, show you a different strategy. Um, if you look at this strategy here, and we haven't talked about that yet, but the strategy used is uh, offsets from floor. So what does it mean? It just simply defines the pattern and create offsets cuts from the floor surface that we have selected. But there are more options uh, available. For example, um, offsets from floor is the first one, which is basically also default. I think it's the most common um, strategy for machining, but it all depends on the surfaces you would like to machine or your part. We have two additional strategies, offsets from ceiling. Uh, it's the same thing like offsets from floor, but now the cuts are being offset from the ceiling. We haven't used that feature yet, um, but I'm going to show you uh, in the next two pass calculation. And then we have a two-pass creation pattern, which is called uh, morph between ceiling and floor. 
Um, now for this example I would like to show you what it does. Um, basically it will um, create a morph pattern between the selected wall surface and the ceiling surface. So what is the ceiling surface? Um, it all depends on um, the part you are machining. In our case, um, our ceiling surface would be, for example, the upper surface from the stock definition, right? Um, because what I would like to reach is a morph tool pass um, where the cuts gradually um, are parallel from this upper surface here and um, spread gradually down to the floor surface here. So this is something which I could imagine would look very good here in this example. And let's see if you can uh, reach that. Go back to the surface path page and um, for the first time now we select the ceiling surface. Now you have seen that uh, this button was available all the time, but it's not necessary to select the ceiling surface all the time. Um, of course you can always select the ceiling surface, but it's only necessary when you say more from ceiling or morph between ceiling and floor. Only in this case you have to select the ceiling surface. In case of offset from floor, it's not necessary to select the ceiling surface. Okay, let's ch change back to morph between ceiling and floor and select the ceiling surface. Uh, I cannot select those surfaces here. You see here, if, we would like, if I would select just this surface here, it's just a partial surface. The system needs to select um, the whole ceiling surface, surface that covers all the area. That means I need to select the um, actually the surface from the stock. Uh, wait, let's get rid of the cutting simulation. Um, so we need to select the um, stock upper surface surface, which is a ceiling surface here, in this case this one, okay? Now, um, we confirm and let's hide the stock definition and bring back the, uh, the part and let's calculate the toolpath. Uh, meanwhile, I make a copy of part number three, rename it part three offset from floor and this we call um, morph between floor and ceiling okay here I just change the strategy to offsets from floor again and calculate it and meanwhile we have a look at the new uh, tool pairs that has been generated Okay, so this is a two pass, and you can see here that our two pass now is morphing um, from the stock upper surface down to my uh, pockets floor surface. Okay, so if you directly compare that to the offsets from floor, you see the, the difference between the two machinings. So in this case, the tool has, or the two pass being generated, has interrupted cuts. So there are smaller segments here at the upper edge, and the the cuts get longer. However, in this case here, um, the cuts are always long because they're um, morphed between the upper and lower surface. So the tool always stays in the material and um, is not moving so much uh, or trapping so much in the air and uh, not um, doing um, connection moves so often. So let's have a look uh, at the cutting simulation for this example. Let's rebuild the stock model and hide the part and hide the toolpath and let's see what it does. Um, as you can clearly see the morph toolpath here. And you see the tool always being um, in the material from the one side to the other side. Okay, rebuild the stock again and simulate this toolpath here. You see that, that the pattern looks different. We got shorter cuts here at the upper edge. And uh, here, down here, we get the offset cuts. 
um, from the flow surface on the full length. 